us. Uh, we, uh, I was in we're, we're in revival uh, with uh, Evangelist Leonard Williams. He had a great word this morning, and so we expect you know we expect God to continue on with this. And so, without further ado, we're going to bring Brother uh, give, give God a hand. God. <laughs> This evening, amen. Appreciate you coming. They've been God to help us again. It's every Bible summary of the book of Numbers this evening. Book of Numbers. I was pondering and thinking. Right now, in our nation, there is a really an uneasiness and an uncertainty of life. People aren't sure. People are skewed of all that's taking place and begin to look at the lives and all that's taking place in our nation. And everybody right now has a but. God, but why this? God, but why that? God, but why didn't you do this? God, but why? 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 And this is a phrase that everybody's speaking because of the uncertainty and the uneasiness of life. Text we're going to read is a very powerful text concerning the life and times of the children of Israel. We're going to look at it and sin, pick it up in uh, Numbers chapter 13 this evening. Numbers chapter 13, you want to look at verse 1 and 2, then we're going to drop down Numbers 1 and 2, I'm sorry, Numbers chapter 13, verses 1 and 2. Numbers chapter 13, you want to look at verse 1. Listen to, listen to these words. And the Lord, and the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, send, uh, send men even to spy out into the land, the land of Canaan, which... I am giving, listen, God, underline these words, which I am giving to the children of Israel. For, uh, from, from, I'm sorry, from, uh, from each one, amen, each one, for each one tribe, amen, of the, of the, of the leaders, so you shall send, amen, everyone, a leader, amen, among, amen, among them. To go to verse 31. But the men who had, but the men who had gone up to spy, up to up, amen, with him, and they said, "We are not, we are not able to go up, amen, against them, against even the people, for even they are even stronger than we are, and they are even greater than and greater, greater than us, and the children of Israel, and the children, and children of Israel." And then it gave the children of Israel a bad report of, of the land and in which and then they had and then spied out, saying, saying that they listen to the land, and then that the land through which and then we had and we had gone, and then gone and then as the spies, is a land that devours its inhabitants, and all the and all the people. All the people uh, which, amen, we, which we saw in it, and in our, sorry, in it, and in our, my, our men, amen, of great stature. It's, it is, it, are, it is our great stature. The six months. Father, by the blood, we thank you. We call you, God, by the grace this evening. Move by the Holy Ghost. Have your way by the blood. We thank you and all you've done, all you will do, and all God's people said. Amen. I want to talk about God's but. Hear me out this evening. You show me a negative person, I will show you a person that has a big but. B U T, not B U T T. Let's settle that right now. Okay? A B U T, not a B U T T. I know these people so well. I know I ought to be doing this, but it sounds good, but 
Yeah, I know I need to be, become more faithful to my church, but, oh yeah, I need to be involved even more, but, you see, your but is stopping you from entering into your destiny. Your but will stop you from entering into your destiny. Now, there's nothing wrong with a but or having a but. The problem is uh, in what comes after the but. But is nothing more than a conjunction. That's all it is. But the problem for many of us is what comes after the but. You see, your problems now of life did not come after the but. Your problems come before the but. And the problem here in our text, if we didn't read it, but in verse 27 and 28, it says, then they, then they told us, excuse me, or they gave a bad report to the children of Israel. Of the land, it truly is a land that flows with milk and honey. It's everything that you said, Moses, but there's giants there. The inhabitants, man, the cities are great, they're fortified. These are men of great stature. And yeah, it's everything it says, but. How many times we say, yeah, God, I understand your promises, Lord. I know you spoke to me, but. And so many times people fail to obtain the promises of God, the favors of God, all because of the but. In Numbers in chapter 14, you can read it on your own. I'm not going to read it, but in verse 27, uh, 22 and 23, it says, Because all of these men have tested me, and they see my glory in the wilderness, amen, he says, but they will not enter in to their destiny. They won't enter in because of their unbelief. And pretty much that's what but is. When you say but, what you're saying is, God, yeah, I understand, but think about Peter. Right? Jesus comes walking through the dead night, uh, and then on the water, uh, and the disciples are flipping out, and Jesus, and Jesus, uh, Jesus says, wait a minute, fellas, it's me. Peter says, well, Lord, if it's you, then bid me to come. In other words, Lord, if it's you, then command me to come. Jesus says, come. I mean, no, Peter was doing fine. Mm -hmm. But his problem was he took his eyes off of God and this, this changed it up. He could have said, but, look, this is unnatural. This is uncommon for man. That's when he began to see. What about you and I this evening? Yeah, I know, God, you promised me this. Lord, I know you promised me your will and everything's going to be fine. Except there's nothing wrong with a but. It's just a conjunction. But we have to ask the question. How do we view God's destiny? See, for years... I used to say, God, yeah, I know it's called, but you don't understand. I'm legally blind. I can't read well. I quit school and I had a ton, of, a ton of excuses why I couldn't do what God wanted me to do. The reality is this. And listen to me here. The life of the children of Israel had never been easy. They always seemed to have their life backed up against the wall. They were always fighting, battling this problem and that problem, much like of God's people today. We're dealing with constant issues and constant problems in any life. What these spies should have said, rather than saying, hey, listen, it's, it's fortified, man. The problem is great. The men are great. The men of war and battle. Think about David. When David stepped into the valley of, against Goliath, he didn't say, oh, but he's a big guy. He's a big giant, man. There's no way. But 
But David stepped into the valley and he said, you come to me with a sword and a spear. I come to you in the name of the living God. There's a difference. See, what these spies should have said was this. Yeah, you know what? We were slaves in Egypt. We were abused in Egypt. But God gave us the victory. But God brought us out in one night. Right? We come to the Red Sea. There's nowhere to go. We can't go to the right. We can't go to the left. We can't go forward. But God parted the waters and we walked over on dry ground. Yeah, we wandered in the wilderness with no water. But God brought water from a rock. The Bible says in the book, of, I don't believe it's the end of and, uh, Numbers, Exodus, Exodus chapter 13. He said that he gave them a pillar of fire by night and a cloud by day to lead the way. Here they're wandering in the wilderness. Listen to me this evening. Many of God's people are wandering today. No. All because of the button that is stopping them from entering into their destiny, entering into all that God has. Yeah, I know God is leading me away. I know God is showing me, but I'm unable. I'm unqualified. Many people are unqualified for their jobs, but God helps them. See, these spies should have known more of the supernatural power of God because this was not their first rodeo. They had been, they seen it. They seen the miracles. They seen how God moved for them. But because of a super and because of a circumstance or a few obstacles, they lost sight of who God was. You and I are the same way. We've seen God do miracles. Right? We've seen God do great things. But when it comes to us, it's a different story. See, what the spies should have said, yeah, it's everything, that you say it is. But God, in verse 1 and 2, the Bible says, God spoke to Moses and said, Send out this land, to send out spies to the land which I'm giving to the children of Israel. Mm-hmm. Think about it. It was already theirs. Mm-hmm. God clearly spoke this. To speak to them and tell them. Tell them to go spy out the land that I'm giving them. The same word, but a different conclusion. The same word, but a different outcome. You see, the matter or the issue is this. On which side of the butt do you put God? Because right now, people are saying, but God, why? But God, you allow this. Let me tell you one thing. It doesn't matter what's going on. God is still on the throne. You have to settle the issue this evening. We can say, yeah, well, you know, I've lost my job. This pandemic has caused me to lose my job. It's caused me to lose hours. But God showed me he was a provider. Right? I was sick in my body, but God healed my body. Oh, I was depressed and lost, but God gave me peace of mind. Man, I had no future or destiny, 
but God showed me there's a future, there's a destiny involved for me. The difference is even is on one side of the butt do we put God? Because where you put God has the ability to change all the factors of life. It's like people that say, you know, yeah, well, I know God wants to save everybody, but, right? But nobody comes. And the people of God, to be honest, we're the worst critics there is when it comes to people coming to church. Especially by for revivals. What we need to do from time to time is to take a step back in life and begin to refocus. Begin to think differently. Because these spies has seen all the miracles. A negative person will never enter into their destiny. Here's Moses in the book of Exodus. You can read through Exodus and Numbers and Deuteronomy. But at the end of Numbers, God shows Moses he says, you're going to see the promised land, but you're not going to enter in. Moses never entered in to the promised land. Why? Because of his lack of faith and his disbelief. But the Bible says that God told him, Moses, smite the water, smite the rock, and bring forth water. But Moses did it anger. That's if you won't enter in. This text, the tragedy in this text, is not that one man or one family didn't enter into the destiny. This generation, from 20 years up, none of them entered into their destiny. Only those under 20 years old were able to enter in to their destiny. The Bible says that they tested me. God said, because of them testing me, they will not enter in to their destiny. And they never did. Joshua, he hears the report of these men. But he says, we are well able to go up. Yeah. Joshua was second in command to Moses at the time. When Moses died in the book of Joshua, God speaks to Joshua in the book of Joshua in chapter 1. It's about 10 different times. He says, be of good courage. As I have been with Moses, so will I be with you. God is saying, listen, don't worry about it. Joshua, I'm going to take you into your destiny. Not just you, but I'm going to bring this generation from 20 years and under with me. Caleb was 85 years old when he took the mountaintop. The same, he said, listen, give me the mountain. There's much land to be taken. Give me the mountain. He's a man that is 85 years old and steps into his destiny, steps in and into all that God has. Why? Because he was a man that said, God, you said, you're going to give me this. This is my portion. This is my inheritance. And I want it. And he took it. How many times have we known people that have had a promise and yet they never enter into that promise, they never obtain all that God has for their life being simple for the simple fact is they cannot believe God. God says, I've already given him. But you know, let me say this. It wasn't just normal people. What I mean by normal people, I'm just talking about People in the congregation. These were leaders. These were perhaps the Bible study leaders. 
the outreach director, the assistant pastor. Each one man, or one man from the tribe, to send them. But yeah, it's everything you say. Man, it's blessed, it's, it's wonderful. The, the land that flows with milk and honey. Man, the devour the Bible says they brought back grapes, clusters of grapes that they had to carry between two men, one vine. They had to carry it between two men. That's how big the clusters of grape were. But the city, we saw the descendants of Achan, we saw the Amalekites, the Hittites, the Arabs. All of these, and, and yet, man, we can't able. I know God said we can do it. I know God's given it, to, but we can't do it. No. God says it's yours. Now all you have to do is possess it. Go in and possess that which I have given you to possess. So there's nothing wrong with the but. What's the important part? What is the problem is where we put God in all of this. It's like people who said, do you want to be healed? In the book of John, in chapter 5, is the pool of Bethesda, the story of the pool of Bethesda. There's a lame man there. This man's been there for 38 years. Right, Jesus comes because once a year what happens is the angel comes and he stirs the water and the first person that steps into the water gets healed. Jesus sees this lame man there. He begins, the angel stirs and Jesus comes. But think about this for a moment. Jesus bypasses the crowd. Everybody's there. This one man that's there. Jesus said, do you want to be made well? What does the man say? Well, Lord, I, I would like to, but, but when I'm coming down, somebody steps in the water before me. That's not the question. All this man will say, most definitely, Lord, I want to be healed. But somebody comes before me. Times I pray for people and I say, listen, man, you believe God can heal you? Yeah, in his time, I know he can heal me. No, his time is now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What about when he comes to you? When God says, do you believe I can do this? Yeah, but... It's amazing that we can have faith for everybody else to be healed and God to move for everybody else. But when it comes to us, we got a thousand excuses. Yeah, I know God's a healer. I know God's a bot. I'm different. No, you're not. Or let me refer. Yeah, you're different because of where you put God at on the butt. See, God. You can say, but, and then God showed up, right? Mm -hmm. But God showed me he was a provider. Since March, since all of this pandemic began to take place, as an evangelist and not having a a regular job, meaning a 40-hour week, this is my full-time job. This is what I do for a living. And I've spoken to a number of different guys in, on the field, and some of them, some pastors, and just some good friends of mine that belong to certain churches. And they all ask me the same question. Hey, Pastor, uh, uh, you know, are you a starving evangelist yet? Because, you know, I, I, I can't draw unemployment. I don't preach, I don't get paid. And I'm not pulling on your strings, your sympathy strings tonight. But I want to show you this, the power of what I'm talking about tonight. I said, no. 
This is a tear of the I said, yeah, I know. But my God, but my God is a provider. Amen. My God is able. Amen. And he's kept me. I was not stricken. I was in fear by what I was looking or what was going on around me. Paul says in Philippians chapter, uh, uh, chapter three, uh, verse, I'm sorry, chapter four, verse nineteen. He says, "But my God is able Amen. to meet all of your needs. My God." See, when we put "my God," it becomes personal. Mm -hmm. Other people say, yeah, well, I don't got it. No, 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 no. My God. Yeah. Means you're making God your personal God. Mm -hmm. When he becomes your personal God, there's nothing he cannot do for you. All because of how you speak concerning him and where you put him when it comes to the problem of life. Lord, my problems are bigger. No, our God is bigger. We have to put God in his rightful place. Can you have to rethink about your circumstance in life? God, you said, you're going to help me. God, you said, if I call to me, you're going to answer me. God, you said, there's nothing too hard for you. God, you said, if I can believe, all things are possible to them that believe. When you say the reverse, Yeah, but God, I know. You said, but God, I know. No, 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 no. God, you said. God, I'm believing in you. God, I'm trusting in you. So well, before I got saved, nobody thought that I would ever get saved. And a bunch of friends of mine that it got saved from the streets and the neighborhood. They all said, Lenny would never get saved. But when I walked into the church on April 9, 1983, they couldn't believe it. And I can remember being in a room about to commit suicide. And I said, God, if you're real, give me another chance. Some 37 years later, God's still showing me he's still real. Mm -hmm. He hasn't changed. Listen, God wants to show you he's still real. Yeah. He wants to show you his power still exists. And tonight, we're going to believe God for his miraculous power, his supernatural grace to come down. Amen. The very fact that you're still around shows you that God's power still exists. And I understand I'm going to close with this because my honest, but listen to me, I'm not downplaying the pandemic. I'm not downplaying it at all. I understand the COVID-19. I understand the seriousness of it. I know many people that have caught this. And big friends of mine would tell me, Pastor, aren't you scared? No. Why would I be scared? Yeah, well, you know, but you can catch it and become ill. Well, you can catch anything and become ill. Mm -hmm. 
I said, you know what? I said, I said, you can call it false doctrine what you want. I said, but you know what I believe? I said, let me take you back to, to the book of Exodus of the ten plagues. Right? All the plagues when the children of Israel were in bondage. When they were locked in under the hands of the taskmaster, the locusts, the flies, all of these things. Here they are. The plagues come to the very forefront of where they're at. But none of them were touched. Amen. In the book of Exodus, he talked about, he says, when the death angel sees the blood, he shall pass over you. You see, there's power in the blood tonight. Amen. And I'm not saying this because some of you, you know, but I know people, you know people that have caught it. To, I'm not saying they never lived or they weren't living under the blood. But the problem is we know the power of the blood. But the question is, do you still cover yourself under the blood? Amen. I said, listen, I'm not worried because I live under the blood of Jesus. So what he said, other people don't know so what I'm saying. I'm saying I'm not going to allow the demic to affect me in any way. Impossible, I can't, I can't, but I'm going to live under the blood. I'm going to plead the blood yeah. every day over my life. I'm going to plead the blood every day over my wife, my kids, my grandkids. And I spoke with one guy, she said, you know, you're so right. There's still power this evening in the blood. Amen. That power comes from the throne of heaven. Amen. That power comes from the cross. Amen. When Jesus went to the cross and shed his blood for you and I, listen, it broke every bondage. It broke every hindrance to all that he has for you and I. There's no reason for you and I to say, but God. No, no, no. But God, you say. Not God, but why? Why haven't you helped me? Our text, verse 1 and 2, he said, the land that I'm giving to the children of Israel. It's already there. Every promise in this book belongs to you and I this evening. Amen. Your destiny is not behind you. Amen. Your destiny is before you. Amen. And if you can hold to this and say, God, you said, I don't care what it looks like. I'm holding to your word. And we hold to the word of God and watch what God does. Let's bow our heads this evening. First of all, this evening, perhaps you're here or watching online and you're not saved, you're not right with God, perhaps even backslidden. Pastor, I'm not saved, I'm not right with God. I don't understand all that's taking place. But I know one thing, I need God. My life is falling apart. Man, I live in fear. I live under that cloud of depression. And if this God you're speaking of can do anything and you believe that, I want him. You're here in this place, in this audience. You're here, you're in the Savior, master, you lift your hand quickly, quickly before we move up. Anyone this evening? When well, you're alive, so you're watching this. And right where you're at, you may be backslidden, but you know you're not right with God. Or you never asked Christ into your life, but you want to do that. Right where you are, you can lift your hands, Pastor, I'm not saved, I'm backslidden. Here's my hand, pray for me. I want to get right. I want to come out of the cloud of the grace of God. I want to come under his goodness. And if this God you're talking about can relieve my depression, I need him. 
And perhaps you lifted your hand the way you're at online. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to get up from right where you're at. Find a place to kneel and we're going to pray a sinner's prayer. In a moment, church, we're going to open these altars. For these, perhaps, you're watching, you want to say this, just repeat this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus Christ, I thank you for that blood that was shed on the cross for my sins. Lord, you said, if I confess my sins, you're faithful and just to forgive me. And I can have a new life. Lord, I accept that blood and I accept that you died and rose again for me. God, I'm asking you from this day forward to help me to live right, to be right, and to do what's right in your sight in Jesus' name. Church, this evening, we want to open these altars this thing. We must Put God in his rightful place. But it's a conjunction. Your problem never comes after the but. God does. That's putting God in his rightful place. We all have obstacles to overcome. We all deal with problems, family problems, circumstances. But God is still on the throne. And if you and I will keep an open mind, an open heart, put our focus back on God, God can change the outcome in one brief moment. Forty years the children of Israel wandered. Oh, under the hand of oppression. But in one night, they came out. The Red Sea, three and a half million people crossed over on dry ground. That's the God in whom we serve. I want to open these altars this evening. You want to come find a place of prayer. You can come to see these altars are open this evening. Father, we thank you by your blood. We thank you, Lord, by your grace. God, your mercy, I'm asking you by the Holy Ghost. God, that you breathe, that you break on, that you break through this evening. You break through the lives of your people. God, even now, begin to show them, begin to exalt yourself. We are so grateful in all that you've done, all that you will do during this week, during in their lives. I bind every lie, every assault. God, I bind unbelief tonight. I release your mighty power. Salamando ribe calabando ribe calaramanda. Lord, I thank you in Jesus' wonderful name. God, we call on you that you'll have your way tonight. God, move and minister by the Holy Ghost. I cast down doubt. I cast down fear and intimidation. God, I release your power. Let's worship God and thank you. Give him a clap of it. See all that's taking place, man. And really, you know, we know there's a light at the end of the tunnel, but because of circumstances that you're dealing with, you've lost that light. God is going to release the spirit of oppression. You're bogged down, you're bogged, but this thing weighs you down. There's some days you don't want to get out of bed, right? 
Now, here I am speaking to you about personal things you're dealing with. What does that tell you about God? He knows your details. But you you can lift your head and say, God, you see me. What you say to say, Father in heaven, lift your hands. Just say, Father in heaven, I take dominion and authority over the spirit of doubt and unbelief and oppression. You land tormenting devil. You will release my mind. And my spirit, the blood of Jesus, sets me free. The blood of Jesus makes me whole. God, I thank you for your deliverance. God, I thank you for your miracle power. And all that you're going to do from this day on in my life, in Jesus' name. Father, touch her by the blood. Well, sometimes, man, life is sometimes life is so overwhelming. We ain't got an answer, and we try to find answers. We try to, and we begin to question, just like I'm saying tonight. God, but why? God is going to show himself to you in a way you have not even known him. But you must begin to allow him to change you from the inside out. You're battling, you're struggling. Circumstances and problems, man. Addictions, God is able, bro. Listen, you're not who you were. Follow me? You're not who you were. Because the world would say you're a loser. God says, this is, I got a destiny for you. Don't listen to what people speak. It's all about doom and gloom, man. It's not who God is, bro. Father, I thank you tonight by the blood I'm asking you by the Holy Ghost. God, breathe a supernatural power. Touch him right now. Break every barrier and stronghold. Let's worship God and thank him tonight. I want you this morning. I want you tonight. Your focus, the oppression doesn't work. You're, you're bogged down. Your mind, your, your mind is so clouded with this and that and with this. It's so overwhelmed by circumstances in life. If you will allow God to help you, and this is not new. You're not. You're, you know about the kingdom of God. You know God. You see it. But the but them. Yeah, it's fine for them, but I'm different. No, you're not. What makes us different is we think differently. I'm different. That's why I say, God, but you, but God, you don't, but no, no God, it's not what I did. I called you for a purpose. Your conflict, your struggle is with God. But he's going to break through. He's going to help you. Father, I thank you tonight by the blood I'm asking, by the grace of touch by the Holy Ghost. Salamanderebe, I speak. God, every assault against her mind, against her spirit, Lord, loose her right now. 
Father, God, we thank you for all you're doing and all you will do in Jesus' name. Let's worship him and thank you tonight. And I just felt, I feel, just feel a real urgency, a real strong pull to speak. Listen, God is still, your destiny is still there. Because of certain things that, let me still use, there are signs of things that you've heard, and things where people have spoken, that many times has, has pierced your heart, it's pierced your spirit, it's cut you in. Because you sometimes so deep that it's almost like there's not a healing properly because the moment something that you begin to get over one thing, something else happens. And you even question, you say, God, why? God, did you see? I didn't do this. And this thing begins to affect your ability to allow to be able to minister to people in the capacity in the realm that God wants to use your life. You're not a second-rate citizen here. You're not. You're not a second-rate citizen. You have to understand that. You are no different than anybody else. In some cases, you are better than them. But here, I don't mean... I'm not talking about a high and mighty you know, up your nose turned up. Someone come up. You're better than them because of your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And most of it, and a lot of it, is jealousy. But that's the hand of God. They see God on your life. And anytime somebody's not doing as well as we are, they always want to pull us down to make themselves look better. You follow me? That's the problem. Don't allow it. I know it's easier said for it's easy for me to say, don't let it affect you. But then I can tell you at night, man, when you when you're talking and you're, you're whining, you're crying. And I don't mean whining in a bad sense. When you're crying and you, you can't grasp it, you can't wrap your head around it. God's saying you know this. And all that you've done, all the years that you've been there as a laborer and a supporter of your dad, and not just because of your dad, because if that would be in any other church, you would still be doing the same thing because that's who you are. That's what God has placed in you. But there's a place that's going to be bigger than you can imagine that God is going to begin to open doors. Because of your heart, there's been an overwhelming favor of God. It's like you can... We, I, I have a, a, a friend of mine uh, I know we, we, as, as another pastor we talk and he said, man, everything that that guy touches turns to gold. That's where you're at. Everything it seems like you put your mind to, you put your hand to. It's like, man, there's nothing but blessing that comes out of that. That's because of your heart. Solomon says, God, give me wisdom that I can govern your people. God says, because you didn't ask for silver or gold or money. I'm going to do this. I'm going to give you all of this. And if you keep that heart, God is going to continue to open doors. And as you walk through them, there's one blessing after another. But don't lose the servant with heart. Father, I thank you, God, for bringing this wife. I'm asking by the grace of move and minister by the Holy Ghost. Touch them right now in Jesus' marvelous name. God, we're so grateful for all that you've done and all you will do in their lives and through them. In Jesus' name, let's give God a clap off you tonight. We so thank you tonight. Aren't you glad you came to church? Amen. Amen. 
That's not, I, this isn't just preaching doctrine. Mm-hmm. But there is an overwhelming presence of God here. Amen. You feel it. Amen. Let's just worship God. Let's just worship Him with all your heart tonight. Father, we great for God that you visit us and help us. sick in your body, I want to pray for people very quickly. Like you're lying and you need a miracle. You put your head where your pain is, pain in your body. So I want to pray for you in the back. And as I'm talking to her, now listen, we're going to pray right now. God is a miracle God. Yeah, yeah, you know. And it's going to be a miracle. It's going to touch you. And I watched you, and I just, I was just look, thinking before, and so, so actually, you're the one that triggered this. Inside, as I look at you, what I see inside is a shattered person. Your spirit has been shattered because of past violation. Violation after violation that begin to take place. And there's times you've just sat back in a corner and you bawled and cried. So you got why? Why? I don't deserve this. You're right. But because we don't deserve things doesn't mean we're invincible from them happening. Right? God's going to supernaturally heal you right now. In your life, so you can put your hand wherever your pain is as I pray for her. I want you want to pray for you this evening as well. I want you to say this, say, Father in heaven, I thank you for your grace. I thank you, God, that you heard me. Even in my darkest hour, and my weakest point of life. Your ears were tentative to my prayers. God, I'm so grateful that you heard me. And I'm asking you, heal my spirit. Heal my body. Break every demonic assault in my life. In Jesus' name. Loose her. Touch her by the blood of the Lord. Listen to me online. We're going to pray. We're going to cast down every lie of sickness and disease in your body. So you pray with me tonight. Say, Father in heaven, I come to you by the blood. I take dominion over the spirit of sickness. I cast out all pain. I command COVID-19 to leave my body, my health to be improved, my respiratory to function and speak, oh God, miracle power into my life. God, touch me right now. All pain will leave. My kidneys will function as they ought to function. God, you have not given me the spirit of fear and death, but God, Giving me a spirit of life and resurrection power. Right now, I command my body to respond to that resurrection power. Let's worship God and thank Him tonight. If you're online and you've got healed, make contact with Pastor. Let him know. Let's believe God tonight. That's all I have as Pastor comes in. And let's give God a shout. Let's give God praise. Lord, we thank you, Lord. We glorify you. Lord, you are worthy. Lord, you are worthy. Lord, you are worthy. 
To, uh, to uh, come out uh, the rest of the week. Like I said uh, earlier, we, we will be having revival on week, uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Each night we'll have prayer at 6.30. The service will begin at 7.30. And so we invite you to come out, bring somebody uh, who's going to continue praying for the, for the sick and, and uh, believe in God for, for miracles. I'm you know, excited uh, for what God is going to do uh, here this week. So uh, uh, as we, as we uh, get ready to leave, if you'll bow your hands as we dismiss uh, Lord, Father God, Lord, we come before you, Lord, thank you, Lord, for all that you've done in this place, Lord, Lord, for your visitation, Lord, Lord for the decisions made, Lord, I pray, Lord, Lord, that you would keep us safe, Lord, Lord, as we leave, Lord, Lord, and bring us back safely, Lord, as we gather again this week, Lord, uh, we thank you in Jesus' name, amen.